section is is really um, gets into the heart of the message and some of the things that we're talking about and uh, he's talked about in Romans chapter 5 and you know starting in verse 12 around there where he's talking about the death that came from Adam and the condemnation that came on from Adam the the fact that when Adam sinned you know there was one commandment don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and when Adam ate of that tree we all became guilty in Adam because our seed was in Adam and we all had that condemnation passed upon us and from Adam until the time of Moses when they got the law there was no law, so how could there be a trespass? How could there be sin? How could there be something? Well, we talked about the natural uh, understanding that we have, the nature that God's placed in us to know that naturally we know it's wrong to murder someone and, and things like that. So there was still that aspect in which people sin. But there was a condemnation that came just from the very first sin and a death that came to everyone. And then when the law came, now there's all these trespasses, all these sins, all the guilt that's passed on everyone. And uh, we get to the point where, you know, in Romans, he talks about that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, that there's none righteous. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're Jew, if you're Greek, if you're, you know, good, you're bad, your mama's best boy, or you're the black sheep of the family or whatever, everybody's guilty. Uh, everybody has sin in their lives. And the fact that Jesus came and died for our sin and that the gift was so much greater than that one trespass that, that brought death because then there's all the sin, all the guilt, all the the issues that we've had in our lives, all the times we've misbehaved, all the times we've lied, all the times we've gone against our parents, all the times we've done our own thing, all the times we've broken laws in our lives. But Jesus died for our sins. While we were powerless to do anything in ourselves, Christ died for our sins. Uh, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the fact that the gift that he gave is so much greater than the original death that came the original sin that came because now with a multitude of sins Christ was able to come and bring forgiveness of sins and then in uh, chapter 6 as we get into there uh, he talks about how that that grace that comes that that freedom that comes comes because we are now dead uh, to our old way of life we're dead to who we used to be and he talks about baptism and how when we are baptized and we go in the water and we get immersed under the water how we are saying we are dead to who we used to be and as we come up out of the water we're saying we're alive as new creatures in Christ. Uh, you know, the old things have passed away. All things become new. And we're now living a whole new life in him. And because of the life that we have in Jesus, because we are now living a life that is coming from the Holy Spirit of God, and because it's a new life, we're able to walk forth and not be in bondage to that sin anymore. We don't have to do the same things we did anymore. Uh, prior to giving our lives to the Lord prior to accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are slaves to sin. We are in bondage to sin. Uh, we are in corruption all around us. Our parents are sinners and they raised us to be sinners and the culture is all full of sinners and uh, television and radio and all around us, it's all sin and it's all bombarding us and it's all grabbing us and, and corrupting us and bringing us into that whole culture. But when we die to our old life, in Jesus Christ, we surrender our life to him. Now we have a new life and we have an opportunity to walk in righteousness. We have an opportunity to walk in holiness. We don't have to go on sinning uh, anymore. We're going to have struggles in our lives. We're going to have issues in our lives. We're going to have problems in our lives. But we have a righteousness that comes by faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, and so that's kind of the context of where we're at in um, Romans chapter 6. Uh, and I'll start in verse 5. It says that if we've been united with him like this in his death, and this is again talking about um, uh, baptism, uh, where we're united with him in his death, and I'm reading from the New International Version, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been free from sin. 
And here's the beauty of it. Whereas before uh, we were in bondage to sin, we were slaves to sin, we were destined to sin. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take a child long to figure out how to sin. It doesn't take a, a, a person long to figure out how to break laws. Uh, it doesn't take a, a, a young person very long. Uh, anybody ever be a child and you, you, you figured out how to lie? Oh, yeah. Did you need any help figuring that out? <laughs> <laughs> kind of came naturally, didn't yeah. it? <laughs> you know, the, the sin just comes naturally to us because we're slaves to sin. But now in Christ Jesus, as we die to our old life, as we are joined with him in death in the same way he died once for all, uh, we join with him in that death. Now we are united with him in the resurrection. We are raised with him in the new life and we're seated with him in the right hand of God in heaven. Well, we're seated with him in heavenly places and we have an opportunity now because we're dead to sin. We're not slaves to sin anymore. We're free. And we're free because we're dead. We are, we're, we're not the same person we were anymore. Uh, and so we don't have to let that sin live inside of us anymore. We don't have to be surrendering ourselves to sin. Because when we sin and when we serve sin, it becomes a master over our lives. It becomes a slave master. And we become a slave to that sin. Um, you, you think about it with, with addictions and things like that and how easy it is to, to start off, you know, it's it's one drink, it's it's one drug, it's it's one one uh, game of gambling, whatever the addiction is, it's, it's one look at this pornography or whatever it is, and, and then all of a sudden it's a little more and it's a little more and it's a little deeper and it's a little deeper, and and something you think you can have control over suddenly comes and it controls you because you are a slave to that sin. You end up serving that sin. Uh, how many people get caught up in, in into their addictions and that's all they're thinking about that's all they're doing uh, is whatever that addiction is they think about it from the time they get up to the time they go to sleep they're finding ways to get money to serve uh, that addiction that they have that sin that's controlling them uh, they'll even get to the point where individuals will lie and steal and and kill uh, to serve that that thing that has control over them because they become that slave to sin well, now that we are dead in Christ, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we join with Him in baptism, we're surrendering, we're dead to that old way of life, now we're not that same person anymore. And because we're not that same person anymore, we don't have to be in bondage to those things any longer. We're all going to have struggles in our lives. We're all going to have times. There's going to be various things. We each have different strengths and weaknesses, uh, things that we need help with. But we don't have to be in bondage to that anymore. We don't have to be a slave to that anymore. We now have the freedom to choose to serve God. We now have the freedom to choose to do what's right. We, we now have the freedom to choose not to lie. We now have the freedom to choose not to steal. We now have the freedom to choose not to go back to that drink or that drug or that pornography or gambling or, or whatever the addictions are that are in our lives. We don't have to get caught up in those things any longer and we have a freedom to walk in freedom. I love it. Freedom to walk in freedom. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, and it's that new life that we have. It's that new resurrection power of Jesus. And one of the things that's, that's being emphasized here in Romans is it's like, how much more if Christ died for us while we were sinners and he, he was able to bring us into his death, how much more are we going to have life inside of him? You know, we talked about it last week. Jesus said he came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Uh, it's not just a, 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 a weak life. It's not just a little bit of a life. It's not just a, a slightly different life than we might have without Christ. Because of Jesus Christ in our lives, we're able to have an abundant life. We're having, able to have a life of joy. We're able to have a life of 
peace. We're having, able to have a life of productivity. We're able to have the opportunity to be productive in this world. We're able to have a life that changes other people's lives. We're able to have a life that will affect others around us. I mean, how many people will talk about the culture around them or things around them or their neighborhood or whatever it is around them? And they'll talk about all the problems, all the issues, all the things, uh, their family, all the problems they have with their family. It's like, we have an opportunity to be an answer. We have an opportunity to be a solution. We have an opportunity to be a catalyst for change. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to be ones that bring love to other people. We have an opportunity to be ones that bring life to other people. We have an opportunity to bring productivity and blessings to other people. And it's because we have that new life in Him. That's right. That's good news. Yes, it is. I like